And for our next talk, I want to bring on our next speaker, Alokik from Circle, to tell you about how they're doing more things with programmable money. So please give Alokik a big round of applause. Hey, thanks so much, Karthik. Hey, hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Alokik. I'm a group PM um, uh, at Circle. Uh, focus a lot on how we can build like better stablecoin experience and increase the utility of using stablecoins. So, uh, I can't, uh, uh, quick show of hands. How many of you have kind of familiar with USDC or use USDC over the last year? Okay, so quite a few hands. How many of you are familiar with CCTP or have like bridged USDC from one place to another? Okay, good. Yeah. And have, how many of you have actually heard about programmable wallets, which is Circle's like wallet as a service offering? Okay. Very few, okay, cool. Yeah, so today I'm, like, clearly, not a lot of you have heard about programmable wallets, and that's what I'm here to talk about today. Uh, this is one of the new offerings uh, that Circle built over the last year, and I'm gonna talk a lot about what that is, why we built it, um, and share about where we think this, like, wallets and wallet infra are going. So, I mean, Circle is an asset issuer. We build USDC, we also build CCTP, I want to first talk about why wallets and why it's important in how we see uh, programmable money and, and, and making it easy to use uh, uh, USDC. When you look at what our focus is, and I think uh, it is a mission statement, but I think that, that it's, it's super powerful. What we're trying to do is raise global economic prosperity through the frictionless exchange of value. And I think what I want to focus on is the path around like the frictionless exchange of value, right? When you look at stable coins in general, they're becoming the dominant way in which value is exchanged. Uh, it's the dominant medium of exchange that exists on chain. When blockchains were there like 10, 15 years back, it started out primarily with Bitcoin as being like the, the clear asset that people use to exchange value. And over the years, you've seen like that change completely from Bit, uh, Bitcoin to ETH to actually like stables. And, and the volume is significant. When you look at like comparable like traditional financial volumes, the value transferred on stablecoin uh, on like public blockchains today is almost the scale of say a Visa network, right? It has over the last few years grown to a significant value. So the, 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 the exchange of value is actually happening very well with stablecoins. And as we kind of, like we, keep talking with thousands and thousands of businesses who are kind of using USDC in different ways. These are like complete on-chain primitives, like DeFi, we're using USDC, the ERC-20 token, in, 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 in their dApps, right? To more like traditional kind of companies who are using it as like fintechs, payment providers, a bunch of different people. So across the stack, more on the off-chain world as well as the on-chain world, and how they're kind of using uh, uh, using USDC to, to make it easy for them to exchange value. And I think we keep coming, we, we, we kept hearing back that as, as more and more people try to use USDC, there's still a lot of friction in the way uh, value transfer happens, right? The, the friction, and, and we thought a lot about what the friction is. There was friction for end users, there was friction for developers who are trying to integrate USDC into their apps. And as we talked to more and more of these businesses, it became very clear that a lot of this friction was actually at a wallet level, right? I'm gonna just point out a few different things which I guess all of us are familiar with, right? Nobody wants to manage like secret keys. Gas is a big pain in paying that in native tokens on every chain. We're increasingly be going into a multi-chain world and having USDC, having different assets across different chains, you still have to remember different addresses, a simple transfer if I have to do to any one of you, it is two or three lines of questioning to actually do that simple P2P transfer. You have to sign for every transaction. Just a bunch of basic problems that people, ex people have. And what like, end users really want and what we hear is just a s simple like, Web2 experience, right? That's exactly what people kind of want. And when you look at the building side of it, right? If I'm a developer trying to build an on-chain app, all I, all I want is like, it has to be secure. This is like crypto rails, 
crypt everything is pro proved cryptographically. It, there has to be a simple, sec secure way to do it. It has to be flexible for different use cases. It has to be scalable, and I think this is very interesting because a lot of our initial customers or customers who we are trying to talk to were like big enterprises, web to enterprises, trying to build like an app, and the kind of questions we get on the scalable side is like, how can we support 1,000 TPS uh, on, on blockchain rails? Because that's what they're used to, right? And it has to be bundled. There's also a lot of fragmentation as like, if, if you're trying to build an app, you have to have like five different providers based on what you're trying to do, right? And all developers care is just like give me a simple developer experience so I can focus on the actual problem that I want to work on, which is whatever the problem they're trying to solve by, by bringing their users on chain. And this really led us to building like programmable wallets like a year, year and a half back. So we launched like a beta in June 30th with a very simple kind of goal, right? How do you enable Web2 experience with a simple DevX to get more and more people on chain, right? Name is, the na name is self-explanatory, like how do we make wallets more programmable? And, and that, that was the key thing. Which kind of bring, brings me to like, what is like a programmable wallet? Or like how do we think about wallets and what level of programmability they, they have? We thought a lot about this, and I think where we landed at is the key to building a wallet is like three different parts and these three different parts are equally very important and critical in how wallets work. Obviously, one is like the whole account side of things. You have externally owned accounts, EOAs, or smart contract accounts, and how that part can be taken care of. The next thing you have is like securing the key, right? And the third part also, which we think is a very integral part of how wallet should be kind of function, is like the blockchain infra kind of part, which is the way you read and write on-chain at scale. I think it's easy to do like a few transactions, reading, writing on chain, but when you're thinking of thousands of kind of transactions, when you're think, thinking of enterprise scale, uh, it becomes uh, a, a lot more interesting. And based on like our initial kind of customers, which were typically like web to enterprises, we kind of thought about how can we make the key management layer and the blockchain infra extremely programmable? How can we make simple REST APIs that make it very easy to create a key management solution which, is, which, which was very easy for the developer. We kind of landed at MPC back keys, which were either developer controlled or end user controlled. As the name suggests, in one case, the end user, end user has complete control, and in the other case, the developer has complete control. And then, like, you can read and write on blockchains at scale. So I'm like thinking enterprise scale, big companies trying to go on chain, how do we make that happen? Our first kind of like, anchor customer or use case that we kind of went live with was Grab. Uh, for those of you not familiar, Grab is like a, a super app in Southeast Asia, almost 200 million users. Uh, uh, think of them as like a mixture of like Uber, DoorDash. It's like a super app which a lot of people use in, in Southeast Asia. And they, they had a simple request. They we wanted scale. They wanted to focus on use cases and they were kind of like, as you can see, they're trying to get like a bunch of people on chain or, and kind of create like this embedded invisible Web3 wallet inside their app. And th they needed simple things, right? And we kind of went live with them around June or August last year. Uh, and it was one of the first like enterprise deployments of 4337 compatible smart contract accounts because we thought like, like gas management was a big part of what they wanted to uh, offload. And this is just like one type of example. We see a bunch of different other companies kind of trying to go on chain over there, which is, um, which is a big publisher trying to do payouts in USDC, work with like Read.Pay, which is trying to get issue credit uh, debit cards, uh, which are completely backed on chain. So a lot of like use cases of what we like, like real world use cases of using USDC required this very scalable wallet, right? But we kind of, keep coming back to like, how do you, like the experience still when you kind of build programmability at the blockchain infra level, as well as the, um, uh, as well as the uh, key management layer, I think is like not enough. Like where we landed at is you still need experiences which are one click or actually no click at all, right? You still need things on chain. A lot of like what we are building is essentially like off chain logic to enable an on chain use case, right? And that made sense in a world where gas fees were very high, but we are increasingly going to a world where gas fees are low. A lot of 
a lot of that code which is actually off-chain can re rest on-chain. And the third thing which is extremely important, it has to be non-custodial. I think building a good UX is very easy if you have the key in control, but it's extremely hard if it's, uh, if, if it's non-custodial. That's why like, a lot of transactions still today happen on centralized exchanges because of that simple UX. Which we thought a lot about this, and it kind of came back to how can we make the account layer of a wallet as a service a lot more programmable, right? Um, we were a lot more focused on the other two parts, but what if we make the account creation part focused a lot more and a lot more programmable? And, and that's what I wanted to talk to you about today, which is we are very excited to launch like modular smart wallets, right? Um, this is what we think is where wallet infra is going, and this is what we think is super interesting in terms of uh, uh, what we can kind of do and what, what all good experiences we can enable. What are modular wallets? Modular wallets are nothing but modular smart contract accounts uh, that make the account side a lot more programmable, right? They're completely on-chain. They're like a bunch of different smart contracts that can extend the functionality of a wallet. So on the right, as you can see, like you have a base account and you have like different types of modules that you want to extend the functionality of an account. Somebody could have like pass keys, somebody could have session keys. And it's basically like a simpler way to build, in, build a wallet. And, and, and I, I'll talk a bit more about why we think this is important, but I think the crux of it is that all of this is on-chain. With on-chain stuff, code is always law, right? Uh, it is always available, right? It's open. These are smart contracts. Anyone can use them. You can add a smart contract, extend like, like the functionality of it. We are kind of co-authoring a standard around this ERC 6900 around modular smart contract accounts, so they're extremely composable to anyone else writing it. It's not just us writing it. There's a bunch of people trying to write composable smart contracts which anyone can plug in. And it's very flexible so that you can have a specific user experience depending on what you're kind of building. I'll share an analogy, and this is like n by no means perfect, but I think something which I've been thinking a bit about. Like, you have externally owned accounts, and those were the dominant way in which people were transacting and still transacting, right? And the analogy there, it's a lot like a feature phone. It does two things. It signs a message, and it stores asset, very similar to how feature phones were extremely good to send an SMS or call somebody, right? Extremely good for that use case. And then we started seeing few examples around smart contract accounts, right? Uh, I think smart contract accounts were a lot before uh, account abstraction in 2023. You had like SAFE, you had a bunch of different people trying to build very good smart contract accounts and did a great job on certain use cases, right? But there, the, the analogy really is the, the, the it, it's a lot like initially, uh, Smartphones trying to build both the hardware and the software, right? And I think with account abstraction, smart contract accounts obviously became a thing in 2023. Everyone last year was talking about account abstraction, still is talking about account abstraction, and it is a key unlock for UX. But I think where this is going is towards modular smart contract accounts, right? And I think of this more as like the smartphone moment for wallet infra, right? Very similar to how the iPhone and the Android kind of build these app stores wherein they were very composable systems on which people could build apps and enable more functionality, very similar to that. Like these, these ERCs and this for different standards, and there are two standards, 6900 and 7579, which are a lot focused on building modularity at a wallet level. And it's just not like wallet developers writing. Any dApp can write a module, anyone can actually write a module. What's an example of that? We get a lot of businesses who are focused on how can we store our USDC a lot more safely, right? I think you can create an account with, say, like three different modules. You can have like a weighted multi-sig, you can have an on-chain whitelist, you can have like spending limits, all that enforced on-chain. So you can like get a base account and get these three modules, and all of that exists on-chain. You don't have to write any code off-chain or rely on any provider off-chain in order to get like those functionalities. If you, we also get a lot of people who are wanting to like frictionlessly exchange value. So imagine like a dApp creating an embedded smart wallet. And what they really want is very simple automatic experiences. So you can have like a base account which has like pass keys for like a different type of key management. 
You can have something like session keys wherein you can give a scoped permission to a specific address to pull money at regular times. So think like a circle, we're thinking of things like how can we enable USDC led subscriptions on chain and, and things like that. And a lot of that can be enabled by these modules. And it's important to know that it's just not like the wallet developer who's building these modules, right? As USDC, as an asset issuer, we can also say that, you know what, this is a good experience of how somebody can use USDC or how somebody can use uh, CCTP, and we build these two modules, and suddenly any wallet which is compatible to this standard can start using it. I think whenever you build something modular or you're trying to build something composable, I think standards are very important. I think we don't want to be in the App Store on the Android Store, wherein this is just like a closed ecosystem which nobody else can build. The openness of the standard is important, and we kind of adhere to a ERC-6900, which is a modular account standard written by Alchemy, engineers at the Ethereum Foundation, Quantstamp, and a few engineers on our side. And the idea of doing this is, can we make it open? Can we make it composable so that anyone and everyone can build on top of these standards? And I think like, to me, when I often think about what like the 10X wallet is, I think having, as a developer, when you're trying to build that 10X wallet, having programmability at each part of the system, right? Account creation, key management, and blockchain infra, I think is super important, right? And then you can pick and choose what is the use case that you're trying to solve, how you want to seamlessly kind of solve that. So we are, as I said, we are soon announcing and, and launching like modular wallets. We're going to work on a bunch of different modules just as like a wallet as a service provider, but also like as USDC and CCTV figure out how we can further improve the, like the experience of using USDC and if the experience of using CCTV by this, by building more modules that anyone can attach to their wallet to make it more extensible. So these are just like some modules which we are working on uh, with some of them which we are writing, some of that which we are working with like ecosystem partners to kind of write. But we're always, uh, if you want to learn more about modules, if you want to talk about how we can further improve stablecoin experience, uh, more than happy to kind of talk about that. Thank you so much. Thank <laughs> you.